it's a Saturday and it's the second card of the Christmas in July collaboration with Dawn H. Creates. Guys, it's been a, a really good week here. I've been inspired. I actually did the first two cards on the very first week that uh, Dawn had contacted us and I volunteered to take part in this collaboration. So I really find that this is really helping me prepare for Christmas because you know, we have quite a few people to send cards to, and when you have quite a few cards to make, you need inspiration, and I just really feel like this, this collaboration has really helped me organize my Christmas materials and stamps, and just really given me a kickstart, because there's nothing worse than procrastination. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the supplies that I used, and today I have two cards. I watched the other videos that the other artists made and boy oh boy was I just moved to tears to see all of their projects. So I thought this time I'd make two. So I'm going to start with the supplies that I use for each card. They're not very complicated and I'm going to show you each of my supplies and then I'm going to show you the card that I used or the card that I made with these products that I used. So to start the first card I'm going to start with the stamp set I used for the sentiment on the cover. This stamp set is by Stephanie Bernard, Stamps of Life. I used to uh, belong to her monthly subscription of dies and stamps and this is where I got this one. I used the Merry Christmas. Then I have some jeweled snowflakes. I've had these in my stash for a really long time. They look like glass. They're really pretty. I think they're from Doris, but I'm sorry to say I don't have the, the actual package that it came in. I'm pretty sure that it's Doris. Now, this is the most important part of my projects, and I think I'm going to focus on this more and more. The most underrated craft supply you can have for card making, and that's embossing folders. I don't know if it's because of the huge uh, range of embossing powders or different techniques that so many creators use now, or perhaps it's just a way to move product. I don't know, honestly. But I really don't believe in de-stashing things that you can be using over and over and over again in so many different ways. I do not de-stash my embossing folders. I also don't de-stash my inks. There's just no reason to. I think it's a waste of money, and I'm not made of money. So I just wanted to let you know if you have embossing folders, or maybe you don't, they're an excellent tool to invest in, and you do not have to in any way get rid of these. These are hard plastic. They last forever. You can ink inside them and then use them almost like a, an ink plate to transfer onto your cardstock. It's an amazing tool. I recommend embossing folders highly. This too is from Doris. Snowflakes. And then of course I did use embossing powder. I use a white embossing powder. I believe that this is from Hero Arts. Okay, now for the first card. Here's my first card. You can see the snowflakes are raised on the cover. You can see that sentiment that I showed you from Stephanie Bernard, Stamps of Life. And these are those twinkly little snowflakes. And I just thought, since today's theme is a traditional card, I was going to go with something seasonal to show the season and, and the cheer of the season. And I thought snow always made kids happy, always made me happy when I saw it. And it meant Christmas was soon coming. And I also added a sentiment inside, wishing you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I do believe this is also Stephanie Bernard. I also edged around this die cut, which happens to be from Spellbinders, labels number eight. I used a blue marker. I believe it was from Spectrum Noir. And I just matched the blue color that I used in the sentiment with this edge. And it worked out great. So this is card number one. Merry Christmas using the embossing folder and those, those gems. I really love the way they shine. Okay, let's move on to card number two. But first, the products I used to make it. 
Ranger Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. This by far is one of the most valuable colors that you can buy, whether it be in the Ranger dye ink, Distress Ink, excuse me, or the Distress Oxide. This particular color is so awesome at, at, at um, <clears throat> antiquing things and, and really giving definition to your project. Love this color, Vintage Photo. And to use Distress Inks, you gotta have a dauber. So here's my dauber. It, it looks green, but trust me guys, it's not. It's, it's brown now. <laughs> now this is a neat little tool. This card took more tools to make, but I had more fun making it. This is a Distressor, and this is by uh, Tim Holtz. And I love this. This is great. It's got these little blades. They're all the same. They're not different sizes or anything. It's all the same. But you run the paper through here. And let's see if I can grab a piece of paper to show you. Ah, yes, here's one. So you take this edge and you run it back and forth or one way. And suddenly, your brand new piece of cardstock looks like it's vintage and old. And I just find that can really transform your project a decade back in time. So that's the Tim Holtz Distressor for paper. I love that tool. Then I also used Ranger Distress Collage Medium. This can both seal and can also help you glue whatever you're putting down on your card or paper project. It works effortlessly and it's completely clear when it's dry. No shine, I loved it. It was awesome. Distress Collage Medium. Now I pulled some of my punches. Now this goes with also what I was saying about embossing folders. Do not de-stash your punches. I love punches. There's no reason why we have to buy a new thin lit die for every single pattern we need to make on our card project. This is by EK Success. It's the exact punch that Stampin' Up! made a long time ago. This punch makes little edges on the edge and you'll see it when I show you my card. Do not de-stash your punches. You'll find that almost every single thin lit die you can find today online is a, a, a dupe or a copy of one of these punches that you may already have. Hold on to them if you have room. Lots of tools in this one. This is my EK Success um, tweezers that I used. They're like reverse. They stay closed without you touching them. You have to squeeze them to open. Wow, there were a lot of tools in this one. I used one of my Amazon dupes for those brushes that everyone is dying for to add some of the Distress Oxide on my card. And of course, Versamark can't do without Versamark. And then of course, my, my buddy, I forget what they call it, but to me, it's my buddy. And when you don't use this, you have to do it again. Just remember that. Clear embossing powder, just like last time. And here's the game changer for this card. Sorry about the shaking. Don't fall down. This is a Tim Holtz, Tim Holtz ideology ephemera package that I had gotten in the Simon Says Stamp Christmas card kit. And this played the absolute most important role. There are so many possibilities in this bag to make yourself a vintage card. I thought I couldn't have been more uh, prepared than I was today because of this, and I saved it in this bag. And I could probably use this one kit for another three Christmas cards. It's that jam full. Okay, guys. Now I'm gonna show you the card that I made using those supplies. My second and final card for today's collaboration. Now this one is something that I've never done before. I made this card with the collage medium and all the ephemera that came in that Tim Holtz ideology package. I have never made something with ephemera before. I never understood it. Now, I think I get it. If you look here at this edge right here, 
that's where I use my punch. Without it, it was just a, a clean edge, and I really didn't like that. I wanted it to look like it was a receipt that had been torn off a notepad, and that really helped. All of these pieces of ephemera were absolutely beautiful. They had already been um, darkened and tinted and tea stained to look vintage already. So really the hard work was done. I did need to use those tweezers that I showed you to make that bow, but it's really simple to do. You just take the, th the twine or the ribbon that you have and run it through the inside and just like your tying shoes. I double knotted it though, cause you know, it may fall apart. Now on the inside, what did I use? Yes, you guessed it, another piece from that ephemera pack from Tim Holtz. I can't tell you how easy this card was because of that pack. I would recommend it if you can get your hands on it. It really helped me, it saved me really. This card was so easy and so fun. I highly recommend you getting that ephemera pack and others. I think I might need to buy some more ephemera. Never used it before but I'll probably use it a lot more now. Okay, folks, well, it looks like that's the end of today's video, a little bit longer than last time. I hope you stuck through it. We have two cards for today. Today's theme was traditional, and I hope that these fit the bill. I hope you all have a wonderful day today. Look forward to seeing you again next weekend, next Saturday, when I have yet another theme to bring you cards. Make sure to stop by all the other creators. I'll leave all the links below in the description, and I hope you all have a really blessed day. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. It's Born Again Farm Girl, Tracy Lustick, coming right back at you with another Christmas in July collab with Dawn H Creates. We're having a different topic of card or a different um, idea for our, t our cards. <sighs> Hello everyone. Today is July 13th and it's a Saturday and that means it is day two of the Christmas in July. Create with... <sighs>